Hey guys, Sasha from Mobile Geeks here and I'm at the ASUS headquarters in Northern Taipei and um, I need to begin this whole video again with a little bit of a story. Um, roughly around 16 months ago, ASUS launched, in my opinion, something very, very revolutionary during Computex uh, 2012 here in Taiwan. And this was the very first ASUS pad phone. What looks like a transformer to you at the moment uh, turns into something different when you're taking a look at the back side of it. So we have this kind of docking bay here and as soon as I'm opening it um, you see there's nothing in there which is basically because I forgot to put the phone in there. So this is the original ASUS pad phone and uh, this was based on a Snapdragon S4 at that time and you can just get it in there and basically you're going to run the tablet using the SOC that's in the phone. You're also using the camera of the phone and it kind of gives you additional battery life and of course you have this oops uh, kind of uh, heavy headed version of a little transformer. Uh, well they're not using the keyboard anymore but in general this kind of a tablet station that you can see over here is still used in the next generation which was um, the Padphone 2 and then came the Padphone Infinity. So I have this version here um, that came out like four months ago also once again uh, with a nice uh, docking station. Well, of course, they kind of ramped up the game in terms of the specifications. So there's a 5-inch 1080p display with a 10.1 1080p tablet display. And, uh, you know, I'm pretty sure that I've pointed this out in various videos. This is an absolutely gorgeous device. And as you can see, right, the design is absolutely flawless and also timeless. They're using a brushed aluminum, they have nice corning Gorilla Glass. This, in my opinion, kind of brought ASUS from zero into the top five of smartphone manufacturers. Well, not in terms of market share, not in terms of units, but trust me, this is one hell of a smartphone. Uh, and it kind of spots everything that I needed. Um, there is a new kit on the block. Well, and I have it here. So this is going to be the very first unboxing of the new Padphone Infinity and I think we're gonna dive right into this right now. And here we go. So why is this called the new Padphone Infinity? Well, first of all, it sports the Qualcomm Snapdragon 800, one of the fastest SOCs that is available on the market right now. Plus, on top of it, they dramatically improved the image quality of um, the pictures that you're taking with the internal camera. It's still a 30 megapixel camera, but they're using something new. It's called the Pixel Master technology, which uh, should kind of improve the image quality, especially when you're in a low light environment. But you know what, let's um, just do the unboxing right now. Um, well, first of all, here is the device itself, and you won't see much of a difference compared to the previous version, but we're gonna talk about this a little bit later. Um, let's take a quick look. We have the PSU in here. Here we go. That's something, well, not so exciting, of course. And uh, we have a USB to micro USB, and once again, you know what? I, I like industrial design, I like product design. And I have to give um, the ASUS uh, designers some credit and kudos for creating these cute little headsets here. Um, looks pretty good. Looks um, actually very stylish. All right. Okay, I mean, I'm pretty sure that you guys are not caring about the headset. Uh, when we're talking about, uh, what is it starting, like $600, $599 euros, by the way, you Europeans out there, $599 euros, it's coming to Europe right now, even without the docking station. Let's talk about the device itself, and let's talk about the differences compared to the previous generation, which I have here. Well, when we're turning it around, first of all, what you see is um, the colors slightly changed, so we have a kind of... Is this a darker gray? Is this um, whatever? Light gray, dark gray, whatever. Um, but in, uh, when you're taking a look at the edges here, so this is the original Padphone Infinity, and this is the new one. So 
the edges feel a little bit smoother right now. So it's a very, very slight design change, which makes a huge difference as soon as you're taking it into your hand. It feels a little bit uh, like an HTC One because you have this kind of convex curve on the back, uh, while the original one was a little bit edgy on the side, so uh, and not as smooth to hold as the new pad from Infinity is. Um, in terms of you know, weight, we're still talking about 145 grams. It's 8.9 millimeters thick and uh, it has a 2400 milliampere hour battery in there, which should be good for all day user scenario, especially with the Snapdragon 800. Never underestimate the TDP of this SOC, even though it's getting quicker, right? They're lowering um, the power consumption of these SOCs. And it comes with two gigabytes of RAM, there are versions with 16 and 32 gigabyte of internal storage. And you know what? You're gonna love this because there is a micro SD card slot. Let me just quickly find it. Um, it's over here. But that gives me um, a reason to do a little bit um, of a walkthrough of the device itself. So we have a micro USB here on the bottom. Or we have a volume rocker, and this is the power button here. And this looks to me like one of the speakers here. Um, we have a jack for your headset, and then we have uh, the micro SIM card slot and the micro SD card slot. Once again, up to 64 gigabyte. Something that I'm really missing uh, with all these fancy, nice uh, metal brushed aluminum um, smartphones recently that I can actually upgrade it. Um, what else is new? We have a 13 megapixel camera on the back. Well. That's not new at all. And we have a two megapixel camera uh, on the front. And that's about it. And by the way, this is called titanium black. That's the color. There will also be a pl platinum white. Um, yeah, they all have, need to have these fancy names for their colors. Um, it's running Android Jelly Bean 4.2.2. Uh, the display five inch super IPS. Um, it's 400 candela brightness. That's pretty good and of course 1080p which means 441 ppi so and last but not least Corning Gorilla Glass but trust me it's not really helpful. okay I haven't said this sorry about that Corning but somehow I think I'm the only person in the world who can who would even be able to get scratches on a Corning Gorilla Glass 10 in 2021 or something um, well, that's about it, and I think uh, it's about time to finally switch on the device. Let me just kind of set this up so that we don't have uh, too much of headlights here. And let's see. Okay, I'll be back in a second. And finally, I made it from the proper position for this device. You know, because the, the lights on the ceiling are a little bit of a problem. Let's finally switch it on and maybe I need to turn back the brightness a little bit. Let's do this here so you guys should, that should be easier for you to see. Oh, you know what, but I also need to see something. Okay, how about that? Well, uh, uh, let's start with with this notification menu that comes down. Um, nothing really changed to the original pad for Infinity. So we have all these little um, quick settings here. I can switch on uh, the NFC on and off, which kind of hints that there will be an NFC module in there. Not will be, there is one in there. And I can immediately, you know, head over to uh, Wi-Fi settings and, uh, you know, um, the audio wizard, which is also something unique with ASUS devices. It's kind of offering you like equalizer settings for specific uh, listening scenarios. So I really like that. And I think this is, this is very, very, um, very handy. Um, this is uh, for a Miracast display. And last but not least, we can dive into the settings. You know what, this is something that I recently recognized, not only with HGC, LG is doing that. Sony's been using, uh, Sony's been doing it. I think they're not doing it anymore. These settings are all coming with a kind of very bright white background, uh, which in my opinion absolutely sucks. By the way, Android Jelly Bean 4.2.2. Let me show you something about this little button here. 
because this is a kind of a SUS quick dictionary uh, functionality that they've been introducing with the very, very first pet for infinity. So you're just pressing it and then you're heading over to a word, even in an app, right? And it just immediately gives you a dictionary about this, um, what it is. So if this would be, uh, for example, let's translate it to Spanish, um, yeah. Then you have to download the, <laughs> the additional data. Makes perfect sense. Uh, let's go back to English, right? So um, I think this is so handy, especially when you're surfing on kind of foreign language websites. So that's pretty cool. Um, let's go back here. So I said uh, Android Jelly Bean 4.2.2. Let's see which version we got and how much storage is left here. But you know what? This is getting a little bit annoying. Let's get it up there. So I think this is a 16 gigabyte uh, version and you almost have, well not almost, it's 10.5 gigabyte that are still available for your apps. So that's not too bad considering that it also comes with a couple of proper apps here. Um, what you also notice is that this typical ASUS customized version of Android is just very very close to a vanilla experience. Right? Um, what I also like is that they finally got rid of the, the having like the home button, the back and the menu button here uh, in the display itself. So it kind of moved down, but which is also something that they introduced with the original pad phone. Um, so as you can as you can tell, this almost looks like a, a vanilla Android, but we have these ASUS widgets over here for the weather and uh, for your email. Plus here on the side. Uh, we have this little Splendid app, which kind of makes you enhance uh, the image quality or kind of customize the image quality on the, of the device itself. Once again, the audio wizard and the web storage. By the way, with a new platform, Infinity, I'm pretty sure you're also getting like free web storage or cloud storage for a year or so. Um, over here, we have the ASUS apps. Proper calendar. I really like the colors and the overview of it. Um, we have a little um, TAS application. Um, this is called Story. And um, it's going to be interesting when you want to take pictures and you want to put them into a storyline. So you can create a new story. I'm going to call it Test because I've been using already Test again. So these are some pictures that I took earlier. Let's um, choose a bunch of them. Okay, so we have five. Let's say done. It's processing it and it's creating you a kind of flipboard like a uh, flipboard style album that you can also optimize. For example, if I want to edit it, just press here and then I can still move pictures around, exchange them. I can just pinch to zoom in there. I can add um, a storyline to it. Uh, I can add additional pictures again. And of course, I can also add a location here, different layouts. I think it's pretty cool, right? If you if you're on holidays, right, and you just want to create a little bit of a storyline for all the pictures that you took. Let's go back to the start, and then we have the power saver. We have a file manager, my library, and this is the instant uh, dictionary that I've been showing you. Um, app backup just gives you um, a very very easy to manage application to back up all your apps, which makes perfect sense, right? If you want to do a factory reset again. AppLock also helps you to protect your apps because actually you can you can put a, a password on all your apps, so um, you you can't change or update them without uh, knowing the password. Uh, FM radio, web storage, and media frame. Okay, okay. So this is more of um, a kind of uh, screen saver, right? It's just. Um, place back a video or just kind of do a slideshow of some photos and whatnot. And I mean, I think that's about it. So we have all the Google apps here in one folder. Um, we also have car home, by the way, which is kind of interesting because, I mean, when you're in a car, you definitely need, a, in my opinion, a different UI. And this is what ASUS is providing with car home. So you can uh, easily access navigation, play music, and your phone settings, and the phone functionality of it. Like it, Asus. Good job. Um, okay, I need to press exit. That's why it says exit. Jesus. 
what else do we have here? Uh, we have mirror. Okay, hello, that's me. For those guys um, constantly checking their makeup, right? This mirror functionality. Uh, so we have my bitcast here, movie studio, to edit uh, movies with parent, uh, parental lock. Polaris office is pre-installed. We have a little setup wizard that helps you to get through the whole setup of your Petphone Infinity. And you know what? That's about it. And I think it's kind of time to check out the display. Let's see if there are pre-installed movies on here. Oop, nope. Doesn't look like it. Um, but I've already, already took some pictures to check out the viewing angles here. And by the way, this is the gallery app, but it also looks a little bit different. It kind of reminds me again of a Flipboard or maybe kind of flat Google Plus app design, or maybe even the Blink feed from the HSC One. Right, so let's, oh, here's a video. Okay, maybe not. Um, need to sign in. Okay, okay, let's do it. That looks pretty cool, right? This kind of pattern. Um, so here's a picture that I took of uh, my phablet from a Korean manufacturer. Guess what it is? And you know what? Let's check out the viewing angles here, vertical and horizontal viewing angles. Uh, that wasn't so smart at all. Mm -hmm. Well, just trust me. It's it's really good. And let's also check out the camera application because I mean we all love to take pictures. Here we go. So this is also very unique. As you can see um, the application itself looks different but with this kind of um, true pixel oh sorry 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 it's not true pixel Pixel Master. Um, true Pixel I think that's another company that's doing it also in Taiwan. Um, you have this kind of, um, you know, kind of uh, pre-arranged settings here, and when you're just switching into auto, and especially when you're in a low light environment, um, it's immediately switching on um, this special uh, Pixel Master technology, which should do better pictures. Let me also try out something. We also have a turbo mode that I can switch on. Okay, so now it's off. Let, let me just try the tour mode. So that was like 50 pictures. I don't know, this feels like, like a Gatling gun or something. So I can choose the best one. It's just showing me the top five right now. An internal algorithm is coming up with it. Let's save this one, okay. Let's take a look at it. So here we are. Oh, let me just show you some pictures that I took earlier. So here's a picture of my uh, phone, of my little phone collection of my camera. Trust me, that looks really good, right? So this 13 megapixel camera is uh, definitely one of the, let's say, the, 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 the top cameras. Everybody has a 13 megapixel camera right now. But you, you, you can't go for five or uh, eight anymore, even though that doesn't tell you anything about the image quality, right? Okay, let's go back. Uh, what else can we do here? How about the settings here? So I can change the white balance. It's all set to, to auto right now. Oh, the camera resolution was set to 2 megapixel. Interesting. Now it's 3 megapixel. Whoa. So let's... Here's the video quality. Jeez, a lot of setups. Anti-flicker, that's pretty cool when you want to do some proper videos of, of, of some displays. Um, but I would love to... Okay. I would love to have a higher resolution of the camera and I'm pretty sure that you can set it up. Here. So. And let's see, is there an image stabilizer actually? I don't think so. Nope. Nope, there's definitely no image stabilizer. Let's check it out. That still looks pretty good. Um, once again, sorry guys, I will still figure it out how to, how to shoot a 5, 8, 13 megapixel uh, pictures. Um, 
Last but not least, well, of course, there's also a station uh, for this device. Um, let me just show you. Here we go. So here's the pad for an Infinity Station, which didn't change at all compared to the previous version. So if you already had the original Padphone Infinity, right, you don't need to change um, the docking station. Let's just do this here, get it in there, and once again, kudos to the guy uh, who created this mechanism here. And here we are. It's immediately switched on. Look at this. And now you have a tablet. All right, and I can also use the gallery I can take a look at my pictures here. Pretty cool, huh? So what else do you need to know? What about pricing? What about uh, availability of the Padfon Infinity? And what is my final verdict of this? Well, I think some people notice already that I'm a little bit of an Asus fanboy, uh, which is mainly because I just love companies that are taking a risk. I love companies that are willing to think outside of the box and coming up with a new form factor, trying to invent markets. Asus is one of these few companies. Um, this Padphone Infinity, once again, in my opinion, got them into the top five uh, of the best smartphones that are available on the market. The design, the build quality is absolutely amazing. Right? This is a device that you can easily just put next to each and any other phone, even the newest iPhone 5S, right? and people would just grab it and ask you, wow, who made this phone? And you're saying, well, that's Asus. Aren't they making EPCs or netbooks? Right? Well, welcome to 2013. Asus is a proper smartphone manufacturer right now. On top of it, if you fancy a 10-inch tablet, right, you can also get this additional um, tablet station and turn your pet for infinity into one of the best in class 10.1 inch Android tablets. So let's talk about the availability. Um, well, before Christmas, <laughs> uh, I just can't tell you exactly, but they're going to roll it out internationally. Uh, I can tell you a little bit about the pricing. So if you want to get just the 16 gigabyte phone, it will be 599 US or 599 euros. If you want to add the Padphone Infinity tablet station, that one, add another 200 euros or another 200 dollars. So that means you're ending up at 799, which in my opinion is absolutely reasonable for what you're getting. If you want to get the 32 gigabyte model, it's going to be uh, 699 or, of course, with the docking station, $899. Um, there will be flip covers, there will be bumper cases, um, there will be sleeves for the station itself. Um, this is a really, really nice phone. And um, if you're on the market for something different, and if you're on the market for something solid and unique, I would love to recommend uh, to you to take a look at the new Padphone Infinity because this is a goddamn fast device. I'm not doing any benchmarks on Qualcomm Snapdragon 800 anymore. Just trust me guys, it's going to be the same as the other Qualcomm Snapdragon 800 devices. Um, but this is an absolutely amazing device and once again, I love competition and Asus with the new Padphone Infinity is a pretty tough competitor on this market. That's the new Padphone Infinity, very first unboxing, very long hands-on. I'm Sasha from Mobile Geeks. If you have any questions, just leave me a comment. If you like this video, um, please give me a thumbs up. And if you want to subscribe to our channel, right, I'm just happy to invite you to watch all our other videos. Well, this is Sasha from Mobile Geeks. Finally, thanks for watching. Bye.